But question one here looks at the idea of moving students with buses, minibuses and cars. And we can see that the coach moves 60 students at a cost of $210 per bus. A minibus moves 25 students at a cost of $105 per bus. And a car moves four students at $26 per bus. We're told in the question that there are five coaches, the big buses available. So um, you can see with the pricing here that uh, a minibus moves fewer students at, uh, at half the cost. So you'd go with as many coaches as possible to start with in case, so it'll be five times 60, and that equals 300 students. So from the 382 that we started with, we've now got to move um, 382, take away 300, leaves us with 82 students. So now we want to move multiples of 25, so three lots of 25 is 75. Okay, so we want to have three of these mini buses Okay, so three multiplied by 25 equals 75. So 82 take away 75 is going to leave us with um, seven students. Okay, and then in order to move the seven students, we're going to need to take two cars with us because that gives us at least eight spots for the seven students. So two cars. Okay, so and three times four equals eight, and that gives us a number um, that is greater than the number of students. So uh, three coaches, three minibus, so five coaches, three minibuses, two cars. It then tells us to calculate the cost of that particular venture. Okay, so we can then go um, five times 210, plus three times by 105, plus two times by 26. And this is a calc active paper. Um, so we can uh, do that on our calculator if we wish to. And that gives us a dollar sign one four one seven one thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars as our total expenditure. Okay, this question asks us to put these uh, four letters on our number line. And the first thing I'd like to say to you is look at the number line and see what you're told from the number line itself. So you're told from zero through to five. They're all positive values and on the number line you're given um, half and quarter markings on each of the sections. So that relates then to the denominators that we're given here. Um, what I would do here for this question is I would look for the easiest one to start with. So B is the easiest one here. B is equal to one half. So one half is going to be here, so I'm going to write B right there above that. Um, alternately, I might write, do it like this, like we've done in class, where we put an arrow like that, and I put a B like this, okay? Um, you just need to be careful that where you mark the letter gives a very accurate indication of where you want it to be. So two and three quarters, so two and a half, two and three quarters is here. Two and three quarters, whoops. Not the value, you want that C. Okay, so that's that one done. Um, uh, A is equal to one and one quarter. So one and one quarter here is A. And then finally D is four and five eighths. So um, four and five eighths is just above, um, so four and a half is equal to four and four eighths. So it's just past that. So if we look where four is and four and a half, so it's going to be in between here, so it's going to be right there, is four and five eighths. Okay, so now we're looking at factor trees. Okay, so we've got 5, 20, and 300. Um, a good way to start here would be 10 and 52 because 10 times 52 is a nice, easy one to, um, to start with and also means that the 10 you can split up into two and five, so that, that sort of gets that out of the, out of the way. Um, and then you can keep splitting the 52 um, as uh, 26 and two, and then split the 26 as 13 and two, and we end up with this two, five, eight, two, eight, and 13, okay? Um, so that'll give us 13 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 2 cubed. And then 300, again, do the same thing, 10 and 30. And that also gives us 2 and 5 here, and 5 and 6, and 
3 and 2, a minute with 2 and 3 and 5 and 5 and 2. So that gives us then um, uh, was it 3 multiplied by 5 squared multiplied by 2 squared. Um, now we're looking at the, the highest common factor. And so what we're doing is we're plucking out of these the things that are, that are common to both. So we can see here that 2 squared, because it also appears in this, and times 5, so 2 squared times 5, because 5 appears here and it appears there, is going to give us our highest common factor. So 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. So 20 becomes our HCF for those two numbers, uh, 520 plus 300. Okay, so now to, we have an amount of grain that these animal sheep, goats and cows eat per day. So here's the kilos, here's the cost, and we're asked to calculate the cost in grain per kilo. So we're given these two values here. So we can do 288 divided by 16. Um, remembering this is a calculative question, so 288 divided by 16 is going to leave us with 18 as an answer, and it's a cost element, so it's got to be a dollar sign put in front of that 18. We can then use that um, to calculate the other parts of this question. So then we go back up to here, 14 multiplied by 18 will give us $252 to fill that one in. And then 414 divided by 18 will give us 23 kilos here as the other answer that we had to fill into that table. Okay, so let's have a look here. We've got to go from 12 back to six, we've got to divide by two. So to go back that way, it's also divide by two. Four divided by two is two, as our answer to that one there. Um, and here, equivalent fractions here is uh, to go that way, four to six is you're multiplying by 1.5. So multiply here by 1.5 and you'll end up with 18, six over 18. The other way to tackle this one here would be to look at four and over 12 and actually uh, simplify it because four goes once, four goes three times, it equals one third, and then multiply by six to get the six here and multiply by six to get the 18 here, six over 18. So that's the other way to tackle that question. Okay, we've given a set of data and we've got to create a stem and leaf graph. Um, I suppose one of the important bits here is to set up your key. So here you can see that I've done two um, is to eight represents 28. So that means that the tens the value is going to go in the stem column and the units value is going to go in the leaf column. So I look at what my smallest value is here and my smallest value in this set is 28. So what I want to look here is all of the numbers in the 20s. So here's 28 and 29. And so the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to write them in order eight and then nine. So I've got them in ascending order as soon as I write them in. So I've, and I've circled them in the list so I know that I've used them, okay? Now I'm gonna use um, a couple of different things to, to sort of do this. So I'm gonna let a look at the 30s. So I've got 30 here, so I'm gonna cross those off. So I know I've used them. So now I've got 30s here at 30 and I've got 33, okay? And so now I can put the three and the zero for 30 and the three and the three for 33. And I'm going to go back, I'm going to cross those off. So now I know I've, I've used them. This is so my, my system's working at the moment. So I've got 41, 44, and 41. Okay, and, I've, and of course, by doing this, I'm noting that 41's happened twice here. So 41 and 1 and 4. Okay, so I've got three values and three values here. And again, I can then cross them off. And by doing it this way, you're ensuring that you're not leaving any behind. Um, and if you do leave them behind, you will identify them right at the end. So five, and I've got 53, then 55. Um, and then finally, I have 62, oops, wrong color, 62, 63, 64, 68. So I have 62, 63, 64, and 68. So there's my stem and leaf now. It says identify the mode. So the mode is the most common result. And in, in actual fact, there's only one that happens more than one time, and that is 41. So the mode here equals 
equal to 41. The median um, is, the, is the middle number. Okay, so again, for the median, we're using um, n plus 1 over 2. And the number of values we've got here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's 13 over 2, oh sorry, plus 1. So that equals uh, 14 over 2, so that's the seventh value. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 44. So our median equals 44. And then it says calculate the mean which is to add up all of those values. Now remember, it's a calc active task, so that's um, relatively a, a, a bit easier to do. Um, so that's 611, and we've worked, we already know that there are 13 values. So 611 divided by 13 is going to give us a mean of 47. And I, and I think with, when the answer comes for that, Yes, 47 fits comfortably into that, that set of values. If, the, if your answer came back and it was, it was say, like 94 or 23, you go, mm, that doesn't seem to fit within the values I've got. So a little bit of common sense thinking with that. And then lastly, you want to calculate the range. And, of course, the range is the highest value, which is 68. And we want to take away the lowest value, which is 28. And that gives us a range of 40. Okay, so now we've got um, uh, Animal Farm scored 13 out of 15, so 13 out of 15 is a fraction, and Lindhurst scored 8 out of 10, so 8 out of 10 are a fraction. We want to compare the two fractions and see which one is larger, because that point score should win the prize. So here we've got um, 13 over 15 compared to 8 over 10, and obviously here we've got to find common denominators, and the common denominators here would be 30. So times by three times by three is 24, times by two times by two is 26. So Animal Farm has the highest score. So Animal Farm is greater than 20, uh, 26 out of 30 is greater than 24 over 30. So Animal Farm should be awarded the prize. Okay, so here we have uh, eight um, and one third meters is the total distance that two dogs have jumped. Um, both dogs have jumped greater than four meters, so our, our answers have to be greater than four meters in order to, to, to suit. Um, there's, uh, I would take the eight and, eight and one third and I would split it in half. Um, so to do that easily would be to go three times eight, uh, 24 plus one is 25 over three, and I want to split it in half, so I divide it by two. So 25 over three multiplied by one over two equals 25 over six, okay? And that equals four and one sixth. So you could, uh, so you could say that each of the dogs jumped four and one sixth meters each would be a possible answer. But really any answer that adds up um, to give you the total of eight and one third, if you had two answers that add up to eight and one third and they're both greater than four meters would be correct. All right, now we have pigs drinking water out of a tank. And after the first hour, they've drunk two sevenths of the water. So if they've drunk two sevenths, that tells us that what's left in the tank is in fact five sevenths is left in the tank. And in the second hour, they drank two fifths of the remaining. So two fifths of the leftover, five sevenths. So it's two fifths of five sevenths, okay? So two fifths times five Five sevenths equals two sevenths. Yeah. Okay, so there, so therefore they've drunk two sevenths um, of the original tank there. So they've drunk here two sevenths in the first hour, and then they've ended up drinking two sevenths in the second hour. So therefore they've drunk in total four sevenths. So two sevenths and two sevenths is four sevenths. So therefore there must be three sevenths remaining in the tank. Uh, remaining in the tank. All right, so this, here we have, we have feeding gates that open every 25 minutes and riding gates that open every 35 minutes. So let's assume they both open at the same time and then obviously riding gates every 35 minutes since then, feeding gates every 25 minutes um, since then. When will be the number of minutes that they next both open together? So we just need to do multiples of these and then find out, look for the one where it's the common multiple for both. So 25, and we can just list these. 
Okay, and we can see now that there's 175 and 175. So at 175 minutes after they initially open, they then both open again at the same time again. Um, now, if the farm is open for 10 hours a day, um, how often will the gates um, open um, and close uh, together at the same time? So we know that, so that's six, so 10 hours equals 600 minutes. And we know that these gates open and close every 175 minutes. Okay. And so that, um, obviously calc active, so 600 divided by 175 gives you 3.4. And because we're after how many times they open, it's got to be the whole number element of that. So it's going to be three times as our answer.